mean, where do I even begin with this one? It's April. The NBA MVP conversation is morphing into the hottest debate topic on the block. Joel Embiid has said multiple times how he feels about the media and that he doesn't exactly have their respect. There's Giannis, who's won a couple of MVPs and deserves to be in the conversation for another one. Oh, and then there's this Serbian guy up in Denver that's doing things we haven't seen before. But they won't let him win another MVP. Only three guys that won the MVP that wasn't top 10 in scoring. Steve Nash, Jokic, Dirk Nowitzki. What do those guys have in common? I let it sit there and marinate. You think about it. What you are implying, that the white voters that vote on NBA are racist. They favor white people. You I just said that. I stated the facts. I stated the facts. In 1993, Michael Jordan, who was the undisputed best player in the world, pulled off his first three-peat and was the winner of each of the last three finals MVP awards and two of the last three league MVP awards. Which means that he, of course, didn't win an MVP a third year in a row after averaging an impossibly great league-leading 32.6 points per game on 49.5% shooting from the floor, a league-leading 2.8 steals per game, and number one in the following advanced stats. PER, win shares, win shares per 48, offensive win shares, offensive box plus minus, and value over replacement player. He did all of that while leading his Bulls to 57 wins and a chip. But he didn't win the MVP. The MVP was instead handed to a 29-year-old Charles Barkley, who led his Phoenix Suns to 62 wins while averaging seven fewer points per game, playing two fewer games, and he even had six other guys on his roster that averaged double-digit points per game. But MJ finished second in the MVP and instead could have been the first player in nearly a decade to win three consecutive NBA MVP awards. But that isn't all. In 1996, MJ won the MVP after the Bulls broke the record at the time for the most wins in a regular season with 72 wins. And MJ was, well, his usual self, averaging 30.4 points per game on nearly 50% shooting and nearly 43, yes, 43% shooting from three-point range. For the kids out there, that was insanely and utterly great at that time. That was rare, special, mythically wowing. And yes, MJ won the MVP, but fast forward a year later, MJ's Bulls won 69 games, while Mike averaged nearly 30 points, finished in the top five for Defensive Player of the Year voting, and led the league with all the advanced stats I mentioned earlier. But the voters handed the MVP to Karl Malone. Had he finished the season with some rare statistical feats, or even if he led the Jazz to an insane record, maybe, just maybe, I'd consider him the MVP this season. But that award rightfully belonged to MJ, and it wasn't even close. Well, then why didn't he get the award? This, ladies and gentlemen, is called voter fatigue, a term that is typically used as an explanation for why a player who should have won an award likely didn't win it, simply because the voters were, well, just bored of voting for the same player again. It happened to MJ a ton. It's happened to LeBron several times, Kobe, Larry Bird, the list goes on. And now, I'm afraid it's happening to Nikola Jokic. This incredibly gifted white guy who's perplexed us with his skill, IQ, feel for the game and his capabilities to elevate a team on both ends of the floor, nothing that we've quite ever seen before. And it's crazy to think that because the man looks like he's moving slower than a parked car sometimes. In each of the last two seasons, Nikola Jokic has taken the league by storm and has run away with back-to-back -back MVPs. And in just a couple of months when the voting becomes final and the winner is decided, Jokic has the opportunity to win a third consecutive MVP, being the first guy since Larry Bird in 1986 to win three straight. And according to BasketballReference.com, Nikola Jokic has a 65% chance of winning this year's MVP based on his impact on his team, his numbers, and a number of advanced stats that always favor Jokic. But ignore the gaudy numbers and focus solely on narratives and what history has taught us. We should all be shocked if Nikola Jokic wins this year's MVP. If Michael Jordan, the greatest player ever, wasn't an exception to this. If Kobe, LeBron, Shaq, Tim Duncan, any of the Pantheon greats couldn't escape voter fatigue, why would Jokic be an exception to this unwritten rule? We're beginning to see an uptick in guys in the media already favoring other candidates and even going as far as diminishing what Jokic has done throughout this season. Now, before we go there, hasn't the NBA MVP always gone to the guy who is either the best player on the winningest team in the league or a guy who's putting up Herculean statistics? Jokic has kept the Nuggets in the first place of a roller coaster Western Conference since pretty much the start of the season, an entire five or six months, and his numbers have always been next level, just stupidly awesome. He's averaging 25, shooting 63% from the floor, 39% from three, 
and is leading the league in offensive and defensive plus-minus, player efficiency rating, and win shares. Yet we still have clowns in the media that are apparently trying to sweep all of this under the rug. As foolish as that sounds. I've never so, seen a disconnect like this where a guy monopolizes the MVP, yeah. and yet he floats in and out of my top five at, like, five. Yeah. He's not in almost anyone's top three. I've never seen anything like it. That Jokic, the reigning two-time league MVP, he's averaging a triple-double. He's shooting better than 63% from the field. So statistically, along with a superior record, along with a superior standing within his respective conference has to be this man just can't stand Jokic, can he but considering kendrick perkins actually does have a vote and is a voter for the nba mvp and clearly favors joel and b we can't help but think that this might just be an extension of the other voters when they sit down and fill out their mvp ballot the thing is joel and Bede has had a special season and he even said recently that his mind hasn't been on winning the mvp like he's been thinking about entering the playoffs fully healthy but when he comes out and says that he feels that the media just doesn't like him, you can't help but think that somewhere inside of him, he's really driven by winning a potential MVP. And why wouldn't he be? He's 29 years old and in the heart of his prime. Now would be his best shot at an MVP. But if we look at it side by side, the evidence is clear, and there can only be one favorite. It's Nikola Jokic. He outdoes Embiid in rebounds, assists, field goal percentage, has 28 triple doubles on the season to Embiid's one, has played in more games, is number one in nearly all the advanced analytics and, with all due respect to his teammates, isn't playing with another superstar on his team the way Embiid has James Harden and even Tyrese Maxey on his side. And then you couple that with the fact that Jokic's team is higher in the standings and has been atop the standings for quite some time. I really don't know how Embiid is a better candidate than Nikola Jokic. Well, of course, unless Embiid doesn't do something magical that we didn't see coming, Jokic is deserving of his third MVP. And again, it really isn't even close. Should he win it? I say yes. And you probably agree with me now that I've probably convinced you. Will he win it? History says no. Larry Bird is the last guy to win three in a row. He most likely won it by default, considering a 38-year-old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar finished fifth in the race, and Dominique Wilkins finished second, with his team winning only 50 games. Fast forward 37 years later, the MVP race has never been more competitive. And with the number of guys putting up historical numbers, and with voter fatigue historically being the reason why so many all-time greats missed out on more consecutive awards, or just awards, period, I won't be surprised if Jokic does not get the 2023 MVP award. I don't know. What's your take on this?